example to emerald ash borer than if it was in a perfect specimen of that tree. So the focus right now is to eliminate those 78 trees, replant those areas, mm -hmm. and then hopefully if emerald ash borer is which I'm hoping it's not, is found in Wooddale, then those 78 trees will, all, will already be down. And hopefully, since the insect only has about a flight path of a half mile, if we can limit those number of poor declining trees that aren't going to be susceptible, then perhaps we can slow it down. I don't think it will ever be eradicated. I think ultimately, all the ash trees will be coming down in the near future, unfortunately. From everything I talk with the Illinois Department of Agriculture, the Morton Arboretum, that is their recommendation. Any ash trees in poor declining health. So these are policies that are followed by other surrounding municipalities. This is the local, unfortunately, the times that we're in with the Emerald Ash Board. Thanks for um, explaining that to me. And, and, and I actually do agree now. I had misread it, and I thought it said 78 ash trees, and we're going to take them all down. But the, they're the ones that are in poor health, coupled with your explanation about how they're not as resilient, it sounds like, to the emerald ash borer when they're in the declining health. Correct. Okay, thank you. Alder McNally. Uh Thank you. I have a few points I want to make. Um, I'll just segue into it from, from your last uh, comments about removing these, these trees. Um, we have historical precedent just, you know, kind of, I think the spread appears to be happening in a similar manner and pattern and speed to what happened with American Elms. And if you look what certain communities were doing 60, 70, 80 years ago, trying to thin out their population, those are the communities that still have some American Elms left. Uh, so I, I agree, and I also have sat in seminars about emerald ash borers, so I think, I think you're on the right track with removing those that are declining. Uh, now, this is going to sound funny coming from a tree guy, but I would also maybe make the recommendation that after those two years of removing those trees, uh, or during those two years, you also start to look at some of the younger, some of the smallest ones too. Um, healthy or not, if it's less than a five or six inch caliper, take it down before the removal of that tree will make a big visual aesthetic impact. Also, it's cheaper to take a smaller tree down than a bigger tree. Um, and you know, and you're replacing a tree that's already not so big with, with something smaller, but it's, it's, you know, just, just another option that's out there that I've heard people discussing, you know, ways to, ways to approach this so you don't have to take every tree down, but you, you get selective in what you do. Um, you know, also like Alderman Coles, I've actually got seven ash trees on my property, and this year I uh, scraped the money together to uh, start having two of them, the two largest ones, treated. And by next year, I, uh, I expect to be treating all seven, along with my two American elms and uh, two of my Siberian elms. So I'm pretty broke right now, just treating trees to keep them alive. But um, I think I know where Alderman Coles is going with that. I mean, if, if I, I don't know if the federal government's going to get involved and say all these trees have to come down. I don't think it's likely because it didn't happen with American elm. Um, so if that becomes a local policy, or we try to make the local policy, I'll fight it because also everything I've read about treating um, ashes for emerald ash borer, particularly if you catch it before they get it, um, you change the consistency and the smell and basically the you know the the desire of the beetle to want to attack that tree. It doesn't even once you've been injecting for a couple of years, supposedly the beetle doesn't even recognize it as an ash tree anymore. Uh, if that's true, and I'll find out, I mean, we'll all find out, unfortunately, um, you know, anybody that is managing their trees might be able to save them, unfortunately, at a, at a hefty expense over a period of many years. So I just, like Alderman Coles, want to throw that out there. I think looking at private property for obvious signs um, for trees that aren't being treated, unfortunately, is necessary. But I just want to go on public record now saying I don't want to make a blanket statement that someday, even if we know it's in town, that we have to take down all ash trees and all private property. Mr. Kramer. Just for a point for residents that there are two current products on the market that you can inject your trees with. They, one product is a yearly application. The other one is a three-year application. Uh, I don't know if it's appropriate for me to give the names out just because I don't want to advertise for them. Um, 
But if anyone did want to contact City Services, I'd be more than happy to forward that information on to them. Thank you. Elder Shockey. Yeah, I'm just wondering how many people know exactly what an ash tree looks like, yeah. the leaves. Do we have something on the, uh, on the TV showing, uh, talking about the ash tree, uh, emerald ash borer? And I would suggest if we do to add a large picture of what the leaf looks like so that people would recognize it more easily. Mr. Kramer? Uh, correct. We do at City Services have both ID guides for ash trees themselves, the emerald ash borer, which is basically a, a card that has, a, for lack of a better term, a ruler on it, which shows the size of the insect, the borehole, and some other useful information, um, life cycle, things like that. So we do have that available at City Services, and I believe there is also some uh, here at City Hall as well. But I'd, I'd like to see it on the TV and Channel 6. Okay. Especially I, a large picture of the leaf so that people can say, oh, that's my tree. I didn't realize it was. We will work on that. Thank you. Does anyone else uh, wish to be recognized out of my calls? Uh, make sure you tell them that there's uh, seedless and uh, seeded ash trees. There's one that doesn't have, mountain ash doesn't have uh, seeds and the other one does. So. You can explain there's two different leaves on on the tree, on an ash tree. Okay. Hold me, Wesley. I mean, this was a good plan. I really like it. Um, pretty much what I wanted, but the problem is I, I don't see in here unless I misread something here that if we are um, invaded by this, how are we going to notify? Um, the citizens in town and, and all that. I mean, an action plan is a whole plan of works. That's the way I was growing up that put the whole thing out. At the last uh, paragraph, I did include that if a situation arises where EAB is confirmed, the communication would be more time sensitive and further instructions. Um, I really did not get into that. Uh, if uh, the committee wishes I'll be more than happy to, uh, you know, include further correspondence not only on TV6 and then also beyond as far as dated or um, time sensitive documents saying, you know, these are the instructions. I guess I'm looking for clarification on what those should be and what should be included in that. I, I, what I'm Living to it, and I understand the brochures and that are available. And you know what? If it does happen, the arboretum and what we tree city, we could get that info ahead of us. But my question is, I'd like to see the whole. It's a good plan, but I like to see doesn't have to be, but into this whole package deal. You know, we're going to notify these people if we get invaded to get the brochures. Uh, you know, it's just like. It's just like a major disaster if it happens there. What is our plan of action? That's what I like to see. Mr. Kramer. So you're looking for a draft letter that we would have ready in the instant that Emerald Ash Borer is found to be infested in Wooddale that we would send out to all residents? That would At be least no into problem. the area, yeah. I mean, I think it's only right that those people should know. If they see us cutting down these trees, you know, I think there should be a letter attach this action plan for you could pull this this happened this action plan happens you pull that file out and right there this is what we're going to file and that that's it elder wesley would, would it um satisfy you if there was an, another line item in here that said within three days of detecting the emerald ash borer a letter will be sent to all residents in the with, with a certain mile radius and and it'll be on channel six or something like Oh, yeah. Some kind of plan of what would happen right. if we detected it, and, and not necessarily the draft letter, but just something that you know will happen. That I know so. that, you know, if staff changes, I don't want this go blue side that we don't have it in place. That's why I'm saying I'd like to see you in here. I have no problem doing that if you want to do that. Okay. Mr. Kramer, does that sound okay with you, too? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, Mr. Manager. <clears throat> I think we're going to do you one better on that. In addition to the letter, uh, the mayor just informed me that we have reverse 911. 
And if we detect or can confirm the uh, existence of these insects, we can let everybody within a particular uh, area know via that. But I don't think that the reverse 911 works in the high, entire city. I think it's all in the flooded area, Mayor. Mm -hmm. Oh, it is the same. Okay. So it. So then, uh, I'd like to see that included in the. So the reverse 911, and uh, I would think channel 62. Was it? And and then, do we want the letter in addition to the 911 or no? Yes, because most people are getting rid of their household phone and they're using their cell phone now. So, right. I mean, let's let's okay. cover all perspectives. Mr. Kramer? We'll add some language to the end of the communication strategies to include the reverse 911, uh, a letter drafted to residents, and also uh, focusing on um, TV6 information. Perfect. Thank you. So uh, then the only other change that I think we talked about a little bit earlier, but I would like a sense of um, how many there, how many more uh, like immature, I guess is the right word, ash trees are there out there that we've planted in the parkway? Are we talking 20, do you know offhand? You're looking for diameter of trees and, you know, basically the smaller diameter trees currently, as far as ash trees in the city of Wooddale, six inches and under is 49. Oh. Okay. And that's in all conditions of health, good, medium, poor, or declining. So I, I guess the question is, do we want that added into this approach within the two-year time frame? I'm, I'm a little skeptical. I'd probably like to see only the poor condition ones come down. Uh, I know Alderman Cadala, it, it, is it your request that they're in the two-year plan? I'm not gonna make I'm not gonna make it a request, but I'll just you know it's it's my opinion that it should be, but if it's not, it's I'll still vote for this. So, okay, so so maybe something to watch, Mr. Kramer. I, I think as stated in the action plan at the end of um, the at the end of the reduction plan paragraph, it says the remaining trees should be inspected yearly and removed over time. Uh, and areas replanted. So, I, I mean, I think it is included in there, and they are going to be on our radar. Uh, we do know where they are. We have exact locations now. So, um, you know, it will be a watch area throughout the city involved in some other inspections as well, but uh, obviously they will be on our radar. Okay. Sounds good. Okay, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm not sure that you need a motion, but I'm going to make one anyways. I make a motion that we accept the Emerald Ashbore action plan as presented with the addition of a communication plan added um, with the um, different avenues as we discussed. Is there a second? Second. Anything on the question? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Next item, Parkway Tree Ordinance. And uh, what we've done here is there were about seven items that we're going to either uh, change or add, and they were on the top of the uh, revised parkway tree ordinance. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to run down, and I'm going to take it in sections, and if there's any issues, concerns, we'll talk about them. But as we go through, keep in mind, the seven items of revision, you're going to have to look at those as we're going through because they're not in the um, drafted ordinance. And I'm just going to start with the scope of application on the second page, 6.601. And the only comment I have here, and I don't have a lot of comments, but it, this one, should we add something about have it, if a nuisance is declared on private property? to add that into the scope because I think that within here, we're reserving the right to declare something on private pop property, a public nuisance. Um, Alderman Cadella. Uh Yeah, well, Mr. Kramer's trying to think about how to answer that one. I remember we did discuss this at the last committee meeting and I thought that that ended up being a question that may have needed uh, legal uh, uh, interpretation if this is the right place? Because I think it actually was in the last uh, draft, was it not? 
um, or it was unclear, and it and it talked about all properties under city control. If I remember reading that pro correctly, I'm sorry, I don't know. Okay, um, if, if we have to send this back to legal, we can for those checks, those questions. Okay, so so can can you have that as an item that that you're going to review with legal? Absolutely. Okay, thank you. Yes, yeah, Alderman Shockey. And when you say plantings, are you, not, are you talking about flowers? Mm, let's see. Annuals? Oh, yeah. And that's 6.601. 6. Other plantings. Yeah, it, Alderman Cadella is bringing up to me, and, and I remember seeing it too. Somewhere in here it talks about the size of the plantings, which would eliminate like flowers. But I'm trying to find it here. It would um, eliminate planting flowers. No, like it wouldn't include. Oh, it the would flowers. not. Okay, yeah. thank you. Yeah. It, it, okay. I think it says six dot seven oh five. No shrubs, bushes, or other plantings exceeding three feet in height, except approved trees, shall be allowed in the city parkway or right of way. Thank you. Exceed. Yeah. Okay. You're welcome. Okay. Um, any other comments, questions on scope? Alderman Lewitton. Just one minor question and see if I understand it. If somebody has a diseased elm on their property, they're required to remove it. Is that correct or not? Mr. Kramer? That's correct. In this proposed ordinance, it doesn't take into consideration the fact that it would then be a quarantined wood and have to be disposed of at that special disposal place in Lombard. So I think you should put in there that, that the disposal shall follow um, quarantine rules. It, it, okay. I, I know to some degree we discussed it in 6.602B for, for the elm and then again for, for ash, but um, it, Mr. Kramer? Uh, the elm actually is not one of the species that has to be sent to that processing site that I spoke of before. That was just the emerald ash borer, and that actually is in that next included item. The elm, the Dutch elm disease, though, does have to be destroyed within 30 days of notification of such homeowner, as it's stated. No, it does not. There are elm resistant strains as far as I'm concerned. I guess I would still want the Dutch elm disease portion still in the ordinance. I wasn't saying it's like that. I was just asking the point of the historical document. Is the Dutch elm disease ready? Are there any Dutch elm disease and Dutch trees that are susceptible to it anymore? Alderman Cadella? Actually, I can, just on my street forest view alone, I can count five trees that, as of yesterday, just got Dutch elm disease this season, I noticed. There's still elm trees, and they're still getting Dutch elm disease. Some skirt it, some don't. Some drop seedlings. The beetles don't seem to like trees when they're too young, so the trees will get to a certain level of maturity. You'll get another round of Dutch elm disease happening. The trees aren't completely gone, but... There's just not nearly the numbers that there used to be, but it's 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 still a problem, and we should still enforce good forestry practices by you know by ensuring that when a tree is found, be it on public or, or private property, should be removed and not just where the wood is stacked and the beetles can go to the next healthy tree, but but chipped, removed, and then taken wherever it's supposed to be taken. Now, Mr. Kramer is right; it doesn't. There's no. There's no federal or state uh, quarantine law on American elm because so many of the trees are gone. Most of them are gone. It's, it's, uh, it's, 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 it could not be that widespread of a problem were American elms to keep dropping. There's so few of them left. But that's still not enough reason to not practice good forestry and get these trees removed from private property as soon as the problem is identified, in my opinion. <laughs> Section uh, uh, 6.602, Dutch Elm Disease. Is there any questions, comments? Keep in mind, 
that section uh, 6.604B has an addition, and it's noted on our memo, and, and it references uh, transported to a licensed processing site, et cetera. I'm sorry, I, I'm getting the two confused. 6.602. This is where it talks about any elm, wood, or debris is to be removed from the parcel of land in the stump ground to below eight inches of the surrounding grade and covered with dirt. So that's the addition onto this draft that we're looking at. Are there any concerns with this 6.602? Okay, so, so we're gonna accept that addition. Next section, 6.604, Emerald Dash Borer. Keep in mind that item B under this section is where we're adding any ash, wood, or debris is to be removed from the parcel of land and transported to a licensed processing site for disposal. The stump is to be ground below eight inches of the surrounding grade and covered with dirt. And uh, the only question I have on this before I open it up, do you think we should add in here, Mr. Kramer, as in, in, in the license or the processing site as directed by the director of city services or something that says that they're going to use the quarantine site that we have to uh sure we can include both that and then um should we add in the compliance agreement with then the illinois department of agriculture which that links back to the processing site we can note that as well it if you recommend it okay, okay then with that addition, is there any other questions or comments on 6.604? Okay, next item, section three, 6.703, permitted trees standards. I have no comments on this, does anyone? Okay, item section 6.704, prohibited trees. There's a listing there, any questions, comments? Good, we're doing good. Planting parkway trees and shrubs. And there is a um, comment on this section, Alderman Canella. Paragraph B, uh, John, you and I began talking about this. There's a sentence, I'll just read it. Trees will not be permitted on residential parkways where there is less than eight feet between the sidewalk and the curb or edge of pavement, or less than 14 feet between the property line and the curb or edge of pavement where there is no sidewalk. Uh, I agree that some standard should be set, some numbers should be in here, um, and that staff discretion is also going to play a key part in, in making this work, but I think these numbers are, are too large. Uh, point in case, I mean, you look at Irving Park Road, let's just say between Wooddale Road and Addison Road, um, a lot of the uh, areas of parkway are not 14 feet. I know this says residential, but... Was that the intent that this is only for residential or was was this for all parkways? You and I think that there might be less than five feet in between sidewalk and curb and that would eliminate the possibility of planting any more trees there. Once again, if if I'm reading this literally, was it just meant to be residential? In which case I still have a problem with it or was it kind of... I don't think know? it was specified. So. Okay. Well, I think these numbers are, are too large. I think eight feet should probably be down to four feet. And I think the 14 feet between the property line and the curb should probably be maybe like eight feet, to be honest with you. And even there, I still question if that makes sense because I still think you can get a pretty nice tree in eight feet of land. Um, so I, anyway, I think reduce the numbers is where I'm going with this. Maybe you can base them off of a quick survey driving around the city and kind of getting an idea not every street, obviously, but, you know, maybe if you look and I look, we can come up with something. Mr. Kramer? That sounds perfect. Can we also include uh, or the 6.705B additional last sentence to include as well, approved by Director of City Services? Yeah, yeah, I like that. Then we will make those changes at 8, or excuse me, 4 and 18, 4 and 8 feet replacing 8 and 14 feet respectively. Okay, thank you. And in this section, right below C, I read it and I thought to myself, well, wh what is going to happen if it goes over 30 feet? You know, it, it, we're just going to trim it. I would, I would hate to think we're going to have the tree come down or, or whatnot. So if, 
or, or, or do we say it's subject to trimming or it says trees planted under overhead utility wires shall not exceed 30 feet at maturity or, or at estimated maturity because are we talking about the actual planning or I, it, I don't know how to work this one Alderman Cadella, in, in your opinion, was the intent of like this is the actual planning of it, so not to plan anything that's going to get bigger than 30 feet? Well, yeah, I think the intent was to choose a species that's in typical maturity won't go over 30 feet. I mean, you're always going to get, you know, crazy tree that might grow taller than any than any uh, tree book is going to say it should. But um, the idea is to pick a tree that typically doesn't. I don't necessarily agree that that's how this should be chosen. I think I've seen lots of areas where shade trees are planted under power lines and when trimmed properly, they don't interfere with the lines and they look fine. But I think uh, ComEd has shown probably over the last 15 or so years that uh, they're not real sensitive to how they trim these things and they end up butchering the trees. So I think choosing a species that doesn't grow more than 30 feet tall is unfortunately uh, a response to uh, having our hands tied with not being able to tell them not to trim the trees. Mr. Kramer? If that's all right, well, then we'll just change the language to read that the tree will not at mature height over 30 feet. Or, or like, it, it estimated maturity, like, it, it is the intent to not plant a tree that's going to get bigger than 30 feet. Okay. Or, it, no, I'm asking you, like, or, or do we want it that, the, you know? Basically, the mature height is not to exceed 30 feet. That the mature height of the tree will not exceed 30 feet. Okay. Elderman Wesley? Is that planting new trees or the existing trees? I'm not clear on that either. I, I'm not sure because if you're going to put this in there, that means then I guarantee you in this town there's trees over 30 yeah. feet now. Yeah. So are we going to tell them that they have to trim? I'm not sure with that either. Okay. So Mr. Kramer. I guess the way I'm reading it, just because it states trees planted under overhead lines, so that would be future trees. That's the way I'm reading right. it. If you'd like me to change the wording to all, all future trees planted the, shall not you know exceed 30 feet in maturity. But the whole thing is, the, excuse me, the whole thing is then you're eliminating a person that, on their, their own private property, what trees they could put in their backyard. I mean, I don't think anyone would have an mm -hmm. Parkway. I'm sorry. Parkway. Parkway, <laughs> Parkway only. So, so you know what? It, now that I'm thinking about this even deeper, that if this is Parkway and we have our authorized species, are, do any of them get over 30 feet? Because maybe, but then why would we, wouldn't we want to? Okay. Trees to be planted under overhead utility wires shall not reach, shall not exceed an estimated 30 feet at maturity. Would that be fair, like, saying that, I mean, why would to, we... the, the intent of something that's a smaller tree, that's all. What, I, I'm sorry, Alderman Wesley. Why would we even put that under there? Because simple reason, we plant the trees on the parkway trees, so why would you even consider leaving that in there? Knowing that we pick the trees to put on a parkway, you know what I'm saying? I, I think that's more confusing because right. we put the trees in, so we pick what trees. So why don't we just direct, put in there, if you want to put in there, staff puts the recommendation of a tree that doesn't go that high. You're making it a little confusing. That's all I'm saying. I agree. Um, it, I'm going to call on Alderman Police, but first I'm going to ask Mr. Kramer, do you feel comfortable with that if we just leave the like change the verbiage to either taking this out or saying something about staff determining what tree is going to be planted underneath power lines? We can add language to the end of that that specifies that staff will have final approval on planting under utility lines. Alderman, please. Besides, aren't we starting like a the city service is going to be pruning our parkway trees now? Uh, as part of a going forward, I mean, they're not going to let them get wild and whatnot, anyways. Right. Alderman Cadella. Uh, two comments. First, I think we should leave that in there. I mean, and staff's going to do the right thing anyway, but 
there's no reason that we can't have the direction in writing just to make it clearer because t- today's staff knows what to do, but the staff at 20 years from now might not. So if this is still in existence, um, I, I would rather leave that 30 feet in there. Uh, and to answer Alderman Police, as far as pruning, I mean, staff's going to prune dead wood. They're going to prune limbs that are in the way of sidewalks or trees, but typically a tree that grows up, they're not going to be pruning the top of it. Originally, when I wanted to enact the Parkway Tree Preservation Ordinance, I wanted the city to take over pruning around the power lines away from ComEd, but at the time that ended up dying, and I think it was <clears throat> for a lot of reasons. But um, you know, I don't, I don't think staff is really going to prune trees around the power lines. That's what ComEd does every eight or ten years. Mr. Mayor. Uh, question, what's the average height of utility pole? Isn't it less than 30? 25. Oh. It's purely, I, I guess, a guess on my point right now. So The I wires would be somewhat check. less than that. So sounds like uh, you need to readjust your figures here a little bit. Yeah. What if we do strike it? Alderman Canella and then Alderman Coles. The number chosen, I think, is a pretty uh, standard number in an ordinance such as this. Yeah, 30 feet is taller than the bottom of the lines, but 30 feet will not allow the tree to kind of come back and go back over the line. So you'll end up with something that gets pruned around the lines, but as long as it doesn't grow back over the top of them, it's not really a problem for ComEd and doesn't really pose a problem for dropping branches on the lines. That's why that number is taller than your typical uh, power lines. At least that's why I think it's it's a bigger number. I'm going to recognize Alderman Coles, and then I'm actually going to make a motion on this verbiage to strike it, and we'll determine if we all agree or not. Alderman Coles? I suggest we don't plant anything under the wires mm. because Commonwealth Edison comes in, and they don't care how they butcher the tree as long as they can get the opening out, and then eventually the tree dies anyway. Every, every one that I've seen that they uh, wrecked in a, in a, around, they oh. die anyway because they don't care. And they, they trim them. They, anytime they want to trim them, they trim them. And they cut the heart of the tree down. And as far as uh, I, I would say, if you're going to plant anything, you plant small shrubs and be done with the sh in the shrubs instead of trees. <laughs> And, and how often do we have instances where there's a tree that, that we would plant a new tree under a power line? S to date, I can't think of one, but then again, my tenure here is rather <laughs> short. So. Well, we, we're talking about uh, the trees on okay. a power line, and then you say you don't plant any. Okay, then I... Okay, so, so you can think of some places. Okay. I'm going to request that you, Mr. Kramer, you come back with alternate verbiage when we discuss this again, whether it's at council or whatnot. Was it anyone disagree, Alderman Police? When it comes to the overhead utility wires, can't we just put in a policy to plant like a dwarf, like maple or something, right under there? Well, I've got one. I've got one in front of the house. Barely touches the gutters. I mean, it's only 12 feet high, whatever. Mr. Kramer? If we were to change the language to include a number smaller than 30 at mature height, would that be better? To me, that would strike as clear. 20 feet? Yeah. Okay, okay 20. 20. I have no other comments on this section. Does anyone else? To 20. Item uh, 6.706, tree removals and replacements. <laughs> 
Okay, then I'm going to recognize Alderman Shaki, then Alderman Kadala. Yeah, and, and B, first sentence reads, no parkway tree shall be removed unless dead, life-threatening disease, et cetera, et cetera. Then number one says, but you need a permit to remove a tree. And then number three says, if you want a permit, you have to pay $50. Well, which, which is it now? We're saying you cannot remove a tree unless it's dead, but you, re you need a permit to remove it. And then you got to pay 50 bucks for the permit. It doesn't really seem to make any sense. If a tree is dead on the parkway, it should be noted, the city should be notified and they should take care of it, shouldn't they? So, so would you be more comfortable if um, that, that it remained unlawful to take down a parkway tree and they must report it to <coughs> city services to take it down? It, it, well, it doesn't make any sense the way it is, so we have to change something there. Alderman McDonald. That's exactly what I was going to talk about in this section. Um, removal parkway trees for very specific reasons. There should never be a need for a permit to take one down. I know there's been talk in the past about the need for a builder of putting up a house. Uh, for economic reasons, he has to take it down, a, a parkway tree down because of the placement of his driveway. But I, I refer back to the spacing of these trees. You can almost always get a driveway uh, around a tree. Um, I, I'm, I'm against taking it down unless the tree has a problem. So I, I think that Alderman Shockey is right that there's the the ordinance as written contradicts itself, and I would I would prefer to completely strike all of paragraph or section A tree removal permit, and then leave the rest of it intact, and then it makes sense. There there is also a problem farther down the second paragraph of B. Uh, the second sentence that says where they cause a slight distance problem. Sight, I'm sorry. My sight was not good. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so, so for the section A, the suggestion is, is, is to knock out A altogether. Uh, Mr. Kramer, are you in agreement with that, or would you like to advise us otherwise? No, we can remove the permit. Okay, I, I feel the consensus, unless otherwise indicated up here, that we're going to give direction to remove it. Alderman Police. But we are going to keep, it's still unlawful to remove or cut down any tree, right? Just getting rid of the fee. Correct? No. no. I, I feel that item B, first paragraph, covers covers it. Well, no, actually it doesn't, right? No parkway tree shall be removed unless. Alderman Wesley. I agree with John. Remove everything in there because simple reason, parkway trees, again, are ours. They are our responsibility. Remove that whole section. We are getting too much involved in this one. Alderman Cadella. And then in section B, the third paragraph, parkway tree shall not be removed to facilitate development or redevelopment of properties unless it is demonstrated that failure to remove said trees results in an extraordinary burden on the developer. I have a real hard time seeing the reality of that situation. I have a real easy time imagining the arguments that developers will give us why this is an economic hardship, but, but difficult in, in seeing the actual side of it. I'd like to remove that. I may be the only one up here that wants to remove that, but I feel strongly about it. Remove it? Remove that whole paragraph. A paragraph? Uh, uh, correct, but that first sentence really is just restating that no parkway tree should the, what the first paragraph states that it shouldn't come down for these reasons. So if it read parkway trees should not be removed to facilitate development or redevelopment of properties unless it is demonstrate uh, no unless approved by the city services director and it just stops there. Why why put it in? City services knows when to take them down so and it's spelled out otherwise. I don't know why we even need to restate that city services is supposed to do their job. 
Okay. I think they're already okay. doing it. So that's my opinion. I agree now that you say it that way. Are we in agreement to remove that third paragraph and B? I, th I think we do need to have something for the redevelopment contractor because otherwise he'll go in and tear a tree down. Mm -hmm. uh, we, so we should have some prohibition and the first sentence and the first word of the next sentence is all we need. Parkway trees shall not be removed to facilitate development or redevelopment of properties. That's it. Alderman uh, Police, did you wish to be recognized? Alderman Police. If we go that route, basically, now you said shall not be removed to facilitate a development. So if for some reason this lot, could be any lot, it's got a bunch of trees that are fully mature and whatnot, now the guy can't get a driveway in if his trees are, you know, there might be spots in the city where I, I've seen some of the distances you're talking, 20 feet, 30 feet, but I know right in front of my house that the two trees aren't probably 15 feet apart. And as they're growing, I mean, you know what I'm saying? You're saying here that shall not be, you know, that you're basically telling them they can't build. Come on. Well, it's got to be something. Uh, Alderman Cadaller, then Alderman Wesley. Alderman Cadaller? I think I have an idea on how to fix it, and I think you're right. Um, somehow this language should uh, should go back to that spacing that we're that we're calling our our new uh, uh, maxes and mins, basically, assuming existing parkway trees fall within our placement standards, meaning distance between trees, then parkway trees shall not be removed to facilitate development. However, in a situation where the trees are spaced closer than our ideal planning situation, then it would be permissible. How's that? Because you're right. I mean, a row of trees, you can't get a driveway through. But a tree every 40 feet, come on, get around it. Alderman, please. I mean, in front of my house, for me and my neighbor, the city put the trees there. I know they're not conforming to the policy here. Definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, Mr. Kramer, did, do you have the direction on Section B? Are there any questions? No, I have it. Okay. I'll put some language in that links it back to that maximum minimum spacing and then ties it into the redevelopment. Okay. Comment on section B, second paragraph. Keep in mind that the suggested verbiage to add in here was I'm getting a little cross eyed here. It. <laughs> Add last sentence, if removal is not the most cost-effective remedy, other cost-effective remedies will be considered at the approval of the Director of City Services. And does this open up our door to every resident coming in and saying, the roots damage my pipes and fix my pipes and, and let's keep the tree and are we going to fix the pipes or not? I mean, I think this is that spot that it would open us up. And... Uh, I'm looking for from some input from, from council. Alderman Cadala? Well, you have to remember that even in a situation where it is proven that our parkway tree clogs or cracks a uh, sewer, a, a private sewer line, removing the tree doesn't fix that sewer line. Are, are we not still responsible to replace what our tree damaged? So, I mean, I think taking a tree down, you're not only taking a tree down, but we may be liable. I don't know historically if we if we have been, but in theory we could be we could be liable to have to replace the collapsed or the cracked or the split pipe. Um, so my recommendation at that last committee meeting was, well maybe we find a way to replace that pipe without taking the tree down, and we've only had to do half the work at half the cost. So I, I see your point. Does it open us up to every resident who's having a blockage? Uh, I guess it does. So somewhere along the way, we'd have to put some checks and balances in there, and, and it would have to be have to be proven. I mean, I don't I don't know I don't know what those checks and balances are, short of video uh, footage of a camera snake through the line, uh, or at the very least, uh, you know, moist tree roots 
that somebody can put in a bag and say, this is what I pulled out of my sewer. And I, I don't know. I really don't know how to deal with it, to be honest with you. Mr. Mayor. Well, this is going to throw a monkey wrench into this. Sorry about this. But uh, the basic question, why are we doing this? These would be trees we already own on our own parkway. Why do we need an ordinance? A law to affect ourselves? Why don't we just do a policy? And what's the purpose of an ordinance for trees we already own? It says in the scope of application, this applies trees, shrubs, bushes, and other plantings located on the public right of way, city property, and other properties under direct control of the city. So it's stuff we already control. Why so are we creating a law to govern ourselves? One of the reasons why I support this is that a while back, a couple of years ago, um, I was seeing trees marked for, for uh, taking Wouldn't out. Wouldn't that be a policy and, for us to create, to direct staff as to how we handle our own trees? Well, at, at least a common understanding, probably down to this detail, to know what trees are suspect for coming out or not. And, and then I heard stories of how one resident said, I don't like it anymore, and then it went out. And like there, whether that was valid or not, I'm not sure. But, but there was a perception out there that we all need to be under a common understanding. Alderman but wouldn't Cadella? that be a policy correction to our city staff? Alderman Cadella? Well, because it ties into what we are not allowing residents to do to our property, I think in that respect that an ordinance is appropriate. But a resident has no right to touch our property or affect our property or our trees without our consent. Okay. So they have no right to do it. It's our but property it, and trees on our property. So how, in what way is restating the law in a place that's easy to find incorrect? I guess I'm... But what's the purpose of the law? To govern ourselves? In, in my opinion, yeah, it is. Because Wouldn't that better be direction to staff? Well, I think staff is, my opinion, is at one point in the past, and perhaps those staff members are no, no longer with us, but before I was an alderman, I had some problems with certain staff members, and what they insisted was policy and they couldn't show me any policy in writing, and they were taking it upon themselves to, to implement poor forestry practices. So maybe this shouldn't be called an ordinance, maybe it should be called a policy, but it should still be in writing, and it should still exist to govern ourselves. And that's my very strong opinion. And I would certainly agree with you as to that, there should be a policy governing staff on how we handle our parkway trees. But now that I'm thinking about it, why is this, why would this be an ordinance? Since we already own all the trees in the first place. And nothing, nobody can touch it without our consent or without our direction. Although they do. Well, that's a problem. Well, and we, and we need to address policy, that in other right, ways. Right. So it, I would be comfortable turning this into a policy, a citywide policy, and not necessarily an ordinance. Uh, Mr. Kramer, do, do you have um, any input on this at the moment? I'll follow the direction from the council. Okay. Perhaps we uh, we did accomplish quite a bit, and I say on page six, maybe we stop here. And this is one of the few times that I am going to agree to table something. <laughs> <laughs> So, so I'm going to uh, make a motion to table based on, uh, on further review of the intent and, uh, and direction that we're going to take this uh, work in and for no longer than uh, that, that the issue will have to be back on the schedule in um, what we're in July, August, so in September. So, so no longer than September. Is there a second? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Next item, Clefstad Lift Station Rehabilitation Change Order Number 1. I'm going to make the motion look for a second, and then if anyone has questions, they can ask them then. 
I make a motion that we recommend that change order number one in the amount of $17,546 be approved. Is there a second? Second. And a question. Alderman Wesley. Who's running this? Uh, who's in charge of the engineer out here on this one? Christopher, we didn't know about this. Did they not do their homework when they did this plan? Mr. Kramer. From what I'm understanding, when they bid the project, they did not know it was a direct barrier wire. They thought it was encased in conduit, and that's though what's caused the change order. When, when they bid the project, do they come out and look at the site before they do it? I'm sorry, I don't have that information. Right. Well, would locates prevent that of happening like the, you know how we contract out our locates and, and they locate different um, wires underground or whatnot would that have helped here or no I'm assuming that they probably had a section of as built that mm -hmm. they worked off of okay and with this service maybe it wasn't indicated like I said I'm sorry I don't have the information okay I'm gonna keep the motion out there and uh, and and there was a second anything else on the question all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Opposed. One opposition or two down there? Two? Okay, two opposition. Motion carries. Next item is items to be considered at future meetings. Item A, storm sewers, detention ordinance, revision. B, great separation, other safety alternatives, endorsement. Item C, water consumption. Anything else? Alderman, please. I think at the last meeting we talked about putting the alley.